Hey there, everybody. How you doing? I it just started, so let me. Uh, I'm in here a little bit early. It's a little before eleven thirty because I want to see what happens when I do that. So far, I see nobody in the room, but that's okay. We just put out a mailer. If you got the mailer, we're doing a daily briefing for Citizen Journalism School, where I go over new stuff that I covered this morning on my radio show, Fault Lines Radio. I'm going to go over what I think were good interviews from that segment. And I'm going to go over what I think is in the news cycle. And we'll talk about things that you can cover as a journalist. If you're not part of Citizen Journalism School, uh, these daily briefings are the kind of things we're going to be doing all through 2019. Basically, every day I'm hosting the radio show, unless I'm traveling or something. Every day I'm hosting a radio show. And we're, we allow you to take the material from my radio show. And if you want to write stories, including stories that you sell, feel free. We have great material uh, on the show every morning. And so I'm going to talk about a few things. Meetings shouldn't take long. If people have comments or questions and they want to talk, we'll hear from people and answer any questions people have. But uh, hang on one second. I'm still also, I'm still new to Zoom. So I'm not getting fancy with it. But I've got one participant here. That's me. So we'll see what happens. It's, it's almost 1130. I sent this, by the way, here's the thing. I sent this mailer out at the last minute, I know. But what I made the decision was that when you get these things going, it's not going to be perfect at first. So I'm not trying to do every single thing that I can. I'm trying to get people in the habit of, we're going to be doing a daily briefing. We'll be sending it to you later. So if you're part of Citizen Journalism School, the other thing you should know is uh, we're changing something at Citizen Journalism School. It used to be that I would do a lesson and I would record a bunch of lessons. And eventually those individual lessons made up a course then we'd release the course. Now what I'm going to do is, hey, Connie, how you doing? If you Hello. hit your space bar, Connie, you can talk. Yeah. I see you. Hello. Does that make sense? Hello. I just said hello. No, oh, there we go. I heard you. Hey, okay. how's it going? So I'm, I'm just letting know. Oh, there's Rebecca. Hey. Oh, look, there's everybody. Thanks for being on time. I was here a little early. So I, so I was just talking because we're recording this meeting. Oh, Everybody, I even, I even put my face up there so you can see. Oh, there see we go. Hey, <laughs> nice to see you. Well, well done, Connie. Very good. So uh, that's that's gutsy. I got to say. I, I may have to leave early, but I just want to know what you're saying. So No, that's great. So uh, what I've been talking about so far in the recorded part is we're doing a couple things. At Citizen Journalism School, we used to do, I used to do a bunch of lessons and release a course. I'm now going to start, as I do lessons, posting the lessons in the lobby on the blog that's there, which means you'll have access to new lessons every day or so. And then when I do enough lessons to make a course, then you'll also have the course. Does that make sense? So if people want lessons just as they, they can wait for the course or they can go, okay. And the first uh, new course that we're doing is on how to create an article from an interview. And I've already recorded two lessons for it that I'll post later today. And it's specifically a course in taking an interview that somebody else did. Like, let's say you're watching one of the Sunday morning shows, or let's say you're listening to Fault Lines, and turning somebody else's interview into a story. Because this happens, it sounds a little weird, but it's what most journalists do. If you look at the news, it's so-and-so, Congressman so-and-so was on this morning or whatever, did good, good Morning America, and they said this. That, that's a common commercial piece of marketable journalism. And I'm telling people that you can take the show, you can take fault lines. We have Medea Benjamin on this morning from Code Pink. You could listen to the Medea Benjamin segment and go, oh, she said this, that seems controversial. I could do a story on that and sell it, and we'd be fine with that. Just take, take the show. Think of Fault Lines as raw material. And by the way, think of the rest of the media as raw material too, because that's when, at, when I worked at Breitbart, 
they used to assign somebody every morning to listen to the Breitbart radio show and pull two or three stories. I talk about in the lesson, one of the tricks though, and this is the God's honest truth, what most people do, uh, most journalists, they wait to see what the New York Times or CNN says the angle is. So if Marco Rubio's on the Sunday morning show, most journalists go, I don't want to figure out the angle myself. I'll wait till I see what New York Times covers. You see what I'm saying? And then they either affirm that story or stay neutral on it, or they oppose it. But they've let, they've let the New York Times pick the topic. Because if you think about it, if Marco Rubio's on for 10 minutes, there could be five topics that could, could be newsworthy in there. But the New York Times picks one, CNN picks one, and they generally pick the same one. So in the course, I'm going to show you how to pick other people's topics, but I'll also show you how to pick your own. So anyway, that's, that's one of the courses we're doing immediately. And we'll show you how to transcribe free, how to, so you don't have to type in the whole quote yourself and stuff like that. So let me talk about this morning's show. On Fault Lines this morning, we did a Medea Benjamin. We had a lot of topics this morning on what I see as a big story, which is, is there a rift opening up between, we know there's a rift between uh, President Trump and Mattis and this guy McGurk who quit over his Syria announcement. We've had John Bolton come out and say, no, 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 we're not quite pulling out of Syria yet, but we haven't heard from Trump. So we, we spent a lot of time on the show this morning uh, talking about that. And I think it's an angle you should watch for. Is there a split developing? I, don't, I, I honestly don't know, but there could be. And so watch what Trump says today. Uh, that's a good topic for a story. If you were blogging about something, that's something to anticipate and watch out for. We had Medea on talking about that. We also had uh, Patrick Henningsen talking about that at the end of the show. You can find all the fault line segments. We're back up with the periscopes. They're all on my Twitter feed. And I'll tell you, with, I'm going to post the lesson later, but let me give you the hint now. If you go to otter.ai, go look at the website, otter.ai, O-T-T-E-R, like an otter, otter.ai. This is a site that will take any audio file you give it or video file and transcribe it and you, you, you have to have an account, but the account that's free gives you 600 minutes of transcription time. That's 10 hours for free. I, being a big wig journalist, I pay 10 bucks a month and I get 6,000 minutes. It's crazy. It's crazy. Now, is there a downside? Yes. The transcriptions are quick but they're machine done, so they're not always perfect. But you know what? It beats typing. So I'll talk more about that in the lessons, but don't, don't hesitate to go over to otter.ai and sign. I get nothing, but I, I'm not on commission. But sign up for otter.ai. You're going to see that's a useful tool. And almost what I would do is, because you got 600 minutes free, is I would just grab an audio segment. We'll talk about how to do that in the course if you don't know how to. I would just submit the whole thing immediately, brainlessly, rather than, rather than pick and choose. You could listen to the whole audio and then go, okay, well, I really, I only want these two, two minutes. But for six, if you get 600 minutes for free, why not just submit the whole 20 minutes? Then you've got a transcript to work off of. Does, does that make sense, everybody? Do you see what I'm getting at there? It's two different approaches. Right. Uh, uh, but that's a great tool, and we'll talk about using that. So I would almost get the transcript going first, then go make tea or have breakfast or whatever. Then come back, and now you've got it. Because I swear to God, the transcripts are done within about 15 minutes. So it's super fast. Uh, it's done hour transcripts within 15 minutes for me. So literally, you can just get it rolling, go do something else, come back, there's the transcript, and it's not going to be perfect. It's going to mishear some words, but it does a very good job. And ultimately, you're going to use the transcript to pull a quote or two. Does that make sense? Where you literally copy, yeah. paste it into your word processor, and go from there. The other things in the news cycle this morning, government shutdown, obviously, there's 
no impasse that I'm seeing on this. I'm seeing nobody. Uh, I talk, we talked in the show this morning about how it seems to me the Trump administration is being conciliatory to the Democrats by adding funding because it's funding to uh, help aliens get medical treatment quicker, which seems to me like that's trying to tempt the Democrats to come in. Um, we're just getting back into session. I'm seeing, you know, uh, AOC, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez was on 60 Minutes last night. That's a perfect example of another, uh, an interview somebody else did that go watch. A, a zillion people are writing stories about it today. And some are going to be pro and some are going to be anti. But either way, they're going to go, they're going to pick on the same stuff. Uh, I was going to go to a White House briefing today and I may, but I may not. It depends on when it is, I'll be honest. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else major that we covered. We're back. We're, like I say, we're back with the Periscope, so it makes it easier for you to find. Any questions anybody has? Um, I, Kaylee, it's Becky Noble. Uh, excuse my morning hair. <laughs> um, can you hear me? Yeah, I, I sure can. Yep. Oh, okay. Um, I, in fact, just wrote a story for, um, on my school breaks, I'm still writing for uh, Anne-Marie Morrell over at Litichix, and yes. I did a story about uh, Ocasio-Cortez, about whether or not she's going to, in I can't talk today, whether or not she's going to influence other people in her generation and her age group who are equally clueless to, to run for office, and I think that's, I think it's something to think, because they're kind of the first generation that are really going coming out of a really super dumbed down public education system. And uh, I just thought that was kind of an interesting topic. If other people around the country will follow her. And well, it's a, it's certainly a partisan. I mean, I'm, I, I gotta yeah. tell you, I'm not an, I'm not an AOC hater in the sense no, I don't, that, no. that, that I don't, I think I, I see some criticism. I'll put it like this. I think some criticism that I see helps her. And yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm right. saying? You're and right. Uh, uh, so, but partisan wise, I know she's a pinata basically. Yeah. And, and she's, I'll tell you the thing about her. It's the thing that Democrats hated about Trump. She gets the clicks, right? Yeah. Love, she does. Love her hate her. Doesn't, doesn't make any difference because mm -hmm. she's going to get the clicks. So I think she's undoubtedly going to influence people. I do too. I do too. Now, the question's going to be who's going to be, uh, I'm pulling a name out of a hat, but is will Candace Owens be the AOC of the right? Does that make sense? It might not. Be yes, it does. It does. It's a very good point. But you're you're going to see people go. Uh, I'll put it like this. Do you know what started punk rock? The Eagles and Fleetwood Mac. It's <laughs> right. true. Right. It's, it's true. It was a reaction to. The Eagles and the Fleetwood, Fleetwood Mac were spending a million dollars in the studio, mm -hmm. right? They were making these big albums that took them a year to create. Right. And they were spending a million dollars. And a lot of people were like, screw that. I just want to get a guitar and three chords and you get the Ramones. And, right, right. Right? So, yeah. so you, it wasn't an anticipated reaction, but that was the reaction. AOC... She's undoubtedly going to inspire other democratic socialist yes. Yes. left people, but she'll also inspire people on the right going, no, I'm not going to let her own that. And like I say, someone like Candace Owens, right. I think. Yeah, has, I, I would agree. Yeah. I don't think, I don't know if Candace wants to run for office. <laughs> um, well, no, because it's a different skill set. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, definitely. definitely. Uh, but she could do it. And that I think, but I, I think that's a good topic, but you see what I'm saying? Oh yeah, yeah. This is your base. It's based off of other people's. It's based off of an interview. One of the things I say in the course is, I really am trying to get people, and this is one of my goals with Citizen Journalism School this year in general. I'm trying to get people to create their own news cycle to stop. That's a good idea. Going along with, I'm not even saying it's right or wrong, but it's too easy to default to. Noam Chomsky in uh, Manufacturing Consent says the New York Times sets the editorial page for the world. And it's very hard to argue with that. And 
they even said it for Breitbart and the Daily Caller and these and and Gateway Pundit, who I'll be writing for this year. It's too easy to let the New York Times say, well, this is what we're talking about. And that's why on my show, we talk about Browder and stuff like that. It's a conscious choice on my part. And so what I would say to you is, you, everybody, create your own news economy. Don't, it's very easy to look at what's trending on Twitter. I've noticed this too. This is what people do. They look for what's trending on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely the way to get clicks. There's no doubt about it. But long term, it's got negative consequences because you're, you're, you're still giving in to the narrative. Does that make sense? You're not really fighting the narrative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can I ask you a question? Yeah, of course, of course. Um, <clears throat> well, I'm not planning on writing anything or you know, doing any blogs, but I did want to let you know that our non-friend mutual Bill Browder I just found out this morning he's going to be speaking in Houston, which is where I am. Um, as a book, World, Affa World Affairs Council. He's promoting his book. They're, you know, a terrible organization. I, I know a lot of fellow thinkers of mine in the Houston area that can have an, some kind of, you know, protest, rally, whatever you want to call it. I'm wondering, you know, what we can do. What would your thoughts be? It's going to be on February 5th. I'm even think I have a, a bootleg DVD. I don't know whether if I should make this public of the Magnitsky movie. I'm thinking of just like standing out there filming, showing it on the wall, you know. So, I mean, well, I I'll tell you, my approach would be to try to ask him a question. My initial approach would be to try to get in the front door and politely ask him a challenging question. Well, someone can, there's a, you can buy a ticket for $35. I don't have any problem doing that. Yeah. So, yeah. so then the question is, are they going to allow questions, which means you're probably going to have to, I'll be honest, you'll probably have to lie. You're probably, if they, if they want questions in advance, you're doomed, right? But if they're going to call on people, uh, I, I would love to see Bill Browder ask a challenging question. That's well. That's, also, well, also, in, in, that's in, me. you know, for going in and asking a question, and also for being outside, having a presence outside. Because a few months ago, they had the same. I think it was the same organization had Clapper here in Houston, and we were standing outside with just a banner and American flags, and we had people pulling over because you couldn't stand right in front of where he was going to be. We had people pulling over and we had a, you know, a leaflet and with links and documentation of various articles that they could get about Clapper. And I'm thinking of, you know, doing the same type of thing with Browder's visit as well. Well, see the, so my, my philosophy on this, and it's not shared. I've, you know, I've interviewed people like Laura Loomer, who's more of an activist than I am even, but I'll tell you, but it's, I've told the joke before, but it's from the film Colors with Robert Duvall and uh, Sean Penn. There's a joke in there. I'll, I'll tell it's a slightly less salty version. <laughs> bulls on a, on a hill, and there's an old bull and a young bull. And the young bull says, hey, let's go down and uh, make love to uh, one of those cows. Let's run down and make love to one of those cows. He doesn't say make love. And... Uh, <laughs> and and the old bull says, no, let's walk down and make love to them all. And, <laughs> and the, the difference between youth and age here is if we run down, we can have some impact, right? Which is true. You can. And so someone like Laura Loomer, she's able to become trending. Long term, she doesn't have a platform on Twitter anymore. And long term, you see what I'm saying? So to my mind... A guy like Browder, I'm okay with getting thrown out for asking him a legitimate question, but I'd rather ask him a legitimate question, get thrown out for that, or not ask him a legitimate question, but not get thrown out, than stand up and start yelling at him. Does that make sense? Like, I'm not a, that, this is always my argument, and it's yeah, not that, that makes I, sense. Yeah. I, I and, and people mistake it sometimes that I'm nicer than Laura. I don't think I'm nicer. I really don't. I'm not, I'm not nicer. I'm, I'm more strategic, I think. 
Right. And so I'm really trying to take, like I say, it's the difference between let's grab one and grab them all. I really want to take down globalism. That's really what my goal is. And you don't do it by getting yourself taken out of the game so early. We had Ali Alexander on this morning. He's been kicked off Twitter. He's been suspended. I didn't quite get the whole story this morning, but he's been suspended from Twitter. It's another big story. Potentially, in social media world, it's a big story because it's ongoing. But I don't know what happened. You see what I'm saying? So I wanted Ali to talk about it, but he, 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 was, he was questionable on it. So I think it's a great opportunity. The thing I might be doing, I don't think I'm going to go. I talked to my boss this morning. I was scheduled to maybe go to Switzerland in a couple of weeks to Davos, where I was hoping to run into Bill Browder because I have some questions for him. But it doesn't look like we're going because it's prohibitive, prohibitively expensive to go to Davos, apparently. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's one thing we're looking at doing. So great, great question. Thank, thanks for that. Any, anything else? Well, I just wanted to let you know, Lee, that even though I may not be able to, I'm on a break from school till next week, but even though I don't know if I'll ever be able to enroll in citizen journal, journalism school, I'd love to. I just want you to know I'm going to take advantage of anything anything that's that's free that you put out because I know I, I think I know you well enough to know that there's things that I'm going to learn from you that I'm not going to learn in class. So well, I, no, I I appreciate that. Yeah, that's that's what we're trying to do. I, I so my I my here's my plan for world dominance. <laughs> I have two things I'm planning to do. I'm planning to take more advantage of citizen journalism school students to assign stories and have them do stuff. The people, because by definition, if you're part of citizen journalism school, you're probably a little more committed to like writing and stuff like that than if you're not, right? It just makes right. sense. Right. But not necessarily. Some people are in CJS as a support thing and some people are in there to learn about the news. But I also want to take advantage of people who aren't members of citizen journalism school and try to get them more active. And some of those people I think will go, well, you know what, I might as well join. Uh, so there's an advantage to the school eventually, but I just think in general, I'm trying to increase in, uh, I saw this all through 2018. I'm trying to increase intelligent activism. I've been very disappointed in the past two years Mm -hmm. of, and this is part of my irritation about the QAnon thing. Mm -hmm. I view it, I'm not going to get into the whole debate, but I just view it as a tremendous waste of time, a tremendous waste of time and energy where people are decoding these things and they don't turn out to be true. Right. And I'm like, I'm like all of that time, if it had been devoted to Browder or whatever, mm-hmm. or, the, or the Indian child rape case I covered up in South Dakota, that yeah. kind of thing, I just go, all of that time's being spent and I don't see what's happening with it. And I feel 2020 is coming up and whoever you're in favor of 2020 is coming up. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just feel like uh, I don't want there to be wasted effort. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So anyway, that's that's my plan, and so so I appreciate, it. and that's why I put this out to everybody this morning to say, uh, "Hey, come whether you're part of Citizen Journalism School or right. not, just to get a sense of what we're doing." Also, by the way, I really want feedback from people, especially if you're part of CJS, about if you've got a. Let me say this: if you're watching the replay and you're part of CJS, especially, and you you can't make the live versions because we'll do them at about eleven thirty or so, sometimes from Washington. Uh, if you got questions because you can't make the live briefing, send the send me the question. I'll read it at the next live briefing. Does that make sense? I don't want people to feel like they're left out if they can't participate. Yeah, I have another quick question. Well, yeah, two related ahead. question. Number one, um, can you make the you the fault lines YouTube? things available in 20 minute segments like you used to because I used to send if there was like a particular speaker that I thought people that I knew yeah, that were right. interested in various topics it's easier for them to besides oh if otherwise I'm sending them a three hour video and I say go to two hours <laughs> go to two hours in and you can hear this person that's my uh, first question the second question is you used to send out um, 
a, like a daily thing with who the speakers were because I, I can't listen to every show in the morning because of my work schedule, but I like to listen to them afterwards. And if I know which speakers, that helps me to keep track of what the topics were for the day. So I've got, it's a great question, Connie. Thank you. I've, I've got about five things I'm working on in terms of fault lines. The first thing was we did it this morning, which is re-getting the Periscope set up. The Periscope used to be done from my office uh, in Virginia, even though we taped the show in DC. That was when my son Jack was doing it. Jack left to go w work at a grocery store. So he's got a real job. So we've now put it, the Periscope inside. The next thing I'm gonna do is I've gotta go and get a drive and I'm gonna get copies of every Fault Lines episode ever. And I'm gonna to start to cut those down into smaller chunks. The, the YouTube part, I don't know if we can do that. I'm just being sincere. Like, I don't understand how that part of it works. I, so I've just got the Periscope part down. And then tomorrow I'll figure out a little bit more on the Periscope and a little bit more as the days go on. But the idea is going to be Fault Lines on Populous TV is going to have its own page. It's going to have those write-ups. The newsletter, I'm trying to figure out how to do the newsletter in a way I think is useful for people. What we were doing was a summary of other people's headlines. But as I say, I'm trying to get people away from regurgitating the news cycle that they've been handed and creating their own news cycle. Looking at the events and going, gee, this interview, because I do this all the time, I go, that interview is the most important thing that happened today, yet the media is not covering it because they don't understand the story. Uh, so I'm trying to figure all that out, but I don't, on the, on the YouTube thing, I'll look into it, we've had a lot of requests. It's probably further down the list of what I'm doing next, because I'm just trying to get the whole thing like today, we had massive audio problems. So I'm just trying to solve problems on a day-to-day -day basis. And then eventually in a couple of weeks. So if we don't have it in a couple of weeks, ask me then as we're more stable. Does that make sense? If it's not going to slip off completely, I'll, I'll, I probably will remember it. But right now, I'm just trying to keep the uh, ship from sinking. <laughs> That's all I'm trying to do right now is just get the audio video working. And then we'll add titles and all that stuff back in. So that's, that's the short answer. But, we're also, I, but I know people want shorter segments. And I'm, I'm trying to create eventually a version of Fault Lines that people can listen to in either 10 minutes or an hour, like a best of segment. And that's something that people, if anyone wants to volunteer from Citizen Journalism School, <laughs> feel free. Uh, but I, I'm figuring out a workflow for that. So I'm trying to figure out a workflow so that I'm not dependent on my on anybody else so that I can sit down and do a lesson and get it posted and not have my sons or anybody else uh, because that's the only way I can be sure I can get stuff done every day. So, so that's what I'm, that's, that's what I've been working. That's what I spent those two four day weekends doing. Does that make sense? So yeah. great question though, Connie, any, any other questions on anything? Well, I have a good example just from a local newscast. And this, I was watching this late Saturday night, and I realized it was the, you know, it was Saturday night. It's the weekend; people are busy. But it just was just something that really got under my skin. Said, and this was the local CBS affiliate here in St. Louis. That on Saturday you had the funeral of Officer Singh out in California, and the other thing was the um, uh, fund the wall or build the wall rally that Jim Hoff put on, and he had a. I didn't go, but I watched the live stream, and he had a couple hundred people there. He had a fairly good turnout. Yeah. So he had both of those things going on, but and they, they didn't cover either one of them, but they managed to do a story of how people were recycling their Christmas trees by feeding them to goats. Yeah, I, well, that's I, important. If I'm lying, I'm dying. That's important. Yeah. They, yeah. yeah. I mean, you can't make that up. And I was just like, are you kidding me? You know? So, My whole operative theory is that the media is killing itself. Oh, and yeah. Th yeah. this goes back to a theory that I had 20 years ago where I was an Amiga computer person. This dates me, but I was an Amiga computer person and I was working on a product called the video toaster. And we could see that the Commodore, the company that made the Amiga was going out of business. And what I said to the people I worked with at the time was I said, look, when, when Commodore goes out of business, the Amiga people 
are going to go somewhere. They're not going to say, well, I'm done using a computer. So we need to figure out where they're going to go and be there first. That's what our goal is. And I, I've applied that same thinking to news. Everybody knows, ask everybody you know. Mm. News sucks. Everybody knows it. Now, yep. everybody's got a different definition of which news sucks. Like some people are adamant that Fox is the whole problem. And some people are adamant that CNN's the whole problem or whatever. But everybody agrees that it sucks. And so what I said was when you've got a product that everybody hates, <laughs> <laughs> People aren't just going to give up on news. They're not going to go, okay, well, I'm done with news. I don't need to know what's going on in the world anymore. But I said, you've got to present them a reasonable alternative, which by reasonable, I mean, that's got the stuff that they watch news for, which includes entertainment and weather. And it's why we start doing sports on false lines. Why we start doing sports. I don't want people who are into sports to have to flip away to another radio station if they want to find out how the Wizards did last night. Does that make sense? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. we made a very conscious choice. Like we'll stick six minutes of sports in and I'll be the, cause it's true. I'll be the dumb guy who doesn't know anything about sorts and cracks jokes occasionally, but Garland and Eric can talk about it, but this way people don't have to turn away. And, and my theory is that eventually, and it could happen any moment now, people will go, I'm sick of CNN and I'm sick of Fox and I'm sick of Breitbart and they're all lying to me and I'm sick of raw story. I'm sick of all of them. Mm -hmm. And eventually they'll want somewhere better to turn. And that's, that's what right. I think. I, I think people are going through that cycle now, but, but anyway, yeah. listen, I'm going to end this now because I only scheduled it for a half hour. And we're almost done. Thanks to everybody for showing up. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. And I'm going to make you. this available, and I'm going to run a transcript through Otter AI. So let's see how they do on the transcript. <laughs> Love you guys. Thanks so much for showing up. Thanks, Lee. Thanks. Bye. Now I got to figure. Now see. Now I got to figure out how to turn it off. That's my whole issue now. So you get to watch me figure out how to turn it off. This will be exciting. <laughs>